The first week of the legendary month has delivered everything and more as shown in episode 12, topping out with great running activity and a saga that Owen Riegler thought might never end. Yes. As each day ticks by, more does go into estrus, bringing with it the famed lockdown stage, but we're still on the front side of the bell curve. Hoping to find Kelsey cruising alone, the morning of November 8th finds Mike Reed hanging hunting back on the river farm. Good morning. It is November 8th. We got a mid 30s morning. It's nice and chilly, high pressure with the east wind. And Ryan and I are trying out a new spot on the River Bottom Farm. We're down on the river bank on the far south edge. We got the little peninsula off to my west and the south plot where I encountered uh, Kelsey the other night to our east. That's the two spots we've encountered on the central timber straight north of us. The thought process is just bucks cruising the river here, and we just haven't had really any winds to get down in here. So uh, this is the one day that we'll have a wind to hunt right here, so I want to come try it. So we hiked back in here and hung this set this morning. We've already had some action. We had a, a broken up 10 point that I think we have pictures of across the river, chasing a doe around. We've had a couple coyotes come by. We've had turkeys pitch down right here. So it's been an exciting start to the morning. Hopefully Kelsey comes cruise by. While Mike Reed enjoys the morning show, 20 miles to the northwest, Caleb Griner is also trying a new stand location, tight to a bedding area.
November 8th is starting on a positive note. I was watching to the north. We have big ag about a couple hundred yards right in front of us. And these deer should be walking from the north to the south, coming back in here to bed, bucks coming back in here checking for does. And who do you think was at 80 yards? <laughs> I turned around, looked at Jake, I'm like, dude, big buck. And I thought he was gonna come in on a string, but he veered off a little bit to the right. I sent a snort wheeze and um, we got his attention. At least we know now that he's not deaf, <laughs> but that's why we call him Hog Junior. He's an absolute hog. <laughs> a lot of these deer cruise this bedding area to our east, and then they end up coming out here normally and going off to the south part of the farm. So I didn't want to push him too hard. I'm not rattling right now because I'm hoping that he's gonna come through this gap right over my shoulder and check the south farm if he doesn't find any does in here, but hopefully he comes back out here. He should only be a couple hundred yards away right now in this dimmer. But I'd say that's a good start to the day. We'll see what's in store. Well, it's about nine o'clock and man, it's been an awesome morning so far. Right away, we had Hog Jr. come in at about 45 yards. Seems like he's on a mission. We've seen him 15 yards from one of my other stands that we've been hunting this year over in the rye plot. He worked that vine scrape over there. He went back to the south part of the farm. So I think what he's doing is probably just looking for does like everyone else right now and uh, hopefully he makes his way back here to the north, so. I'm just pumped, it finally feels like November. It feels like it's the first good hunt of the year. We've got an all day set in front of us, plenty of snacks. So we'll see if we can't get another encounter with this buck and uh, see if we can't put him on the ground. The day's action has started hot for both Caleb and Mike. Back on the river farm, the bucks continued to move through the river funnel well into the morning. It's a great cruising spot. 
All alone searching, the hanging hunt pays off, even though Kelsey is a no-show. Deciding to get down to move to food for the afternoon, Mike heads to the failed turnip plot where he most recently encountered Kelsey on the hunt for does. Back in Caleb's stand, his hunt hasn't missed a beat. guys it's about 3 30 and so far we have had an awesome hunt this is honestly probably my best rut hunt ever a couple of the highlights so far is guards came in here out of a whim out of breath or something i don't know he came up this ridge and it seems like he's been guarding a doe up there for the past three or four hours i've seen a lot of really good young bucks with a lot of potential but i'm guessing that Hog Jr. is probably doing the same thing that Guards is doing with this doe up here. I gotta think that he's probably found a doe on the south part of the farm. And, you know, the only shot that we're probably gonna have at him tonight is if this doe comes by. So, I'm just making assumptions here. Never know what happens, but man, I am just so pumped that we have had an awesome day in the stand. The all day movement is on, the rut is on. You guys need to get in a tree, so. I think we got about two hours left, and uh, hopefully we can get it done in that time frame. If not, we're gonna make a game plan tonight, come up with something. Probably gonna kick myself for not shooting that guards buck, but hopefully we get another opportunity at this hog junior. He's the biggest buck on the farm, and that's what I'm after, so we'll see what happens. Back on Mike's stand, the guys wait for the first deer movement of the evening. to our last few minutes and I guess we were due for a slow hunt after the last two and a half days. Um, that last 45 minutes or so we ended up seeing a couple bucks, a couple young bucks and a couple does and we had that same button buck that comes feed in the plot every time we sit here. 
Uh, we did jump a buck, bedded with the doe. I think it was to turn in 10, but it was a little hard to tell. Uh, I actually didn't see it. Rye, Rye saw it right where we parked. It was on the other side of the dike. I got past them before they jumped up. Um, so, you know, obviously there seems to be quite a few does in estrus, and some of these bucks are locking down. This time of year is feast or famine, and uh, it's the tail of two halves of the day, obviously. 15 bucks this morning and pretty dead this afternoon. But anyway, I've got to work the next two days, and uh, we'll be back out Friday. So we'll see you guys then. The following day, 140 miles to the southwest of Mike's River Farm, Owen Regler's back on stand looking for a cruising buck. That's a good way to start the morning right there. I'd say that's a three-year-old buck. Nice looking deer. We're in the action right here from the get-go. We're just hunting a little travel corridor here. This is that same creek that we killed out of the other day. We were just down there about 200 yards, so we're on the other side of the creek today. We got a nice little conversion of trails right here, and they crossed the creek quite a bit right here, so we'll see what happens. We're after old dad's buck. And he does run this area quite a bit, so I make sure that's him right there. We got one coming the other way. Let's see what that is. Yeah, it's that same buck. He just turned around coming back, but well, it's it's pretty warm. We'll see how they move this morning, but they seem to be stirring pretty good right now. Sit here a few hours, see what happens. Yes. Well, it's just after eight. We've been in here about two hours, just a little after. That was the kicker, Dan, we've been telling you about. And Devin's been wanting to kill that buck and he didn't bring his bow today. So I couldn't help but call at him. I really wanted to call him in and have him walk right under the tree just so I could laugh, but I didn't plan on shooting him anyway. Still a gorgeous buck though. We'll give it another, I don't know, maybe two hours. Then we got some work we gotta go get done. It's gonna get up to like, I don't know, 70 today, 72, something like that. Looking for dad's buck, come on, dad's buck. Owen's morning hunt ends without an encounter with dad's buck, though mature bucks were still daylight walking. Using the warm weather to knock out work, the rest of the day passes by bringing us to November 10th. 250 miles to the west of Owen in eastern Kansas, team member Nolan Redeker continues his season long grind for the buck known as Deuce. Right on time, a welcome cold front is blowing through and Nolan's afternoon reflects this change. The following morning, frigid cold and wind welcomes the Kansas timber. Well, good morning, guys. As you can tell, it is a frigid morning this morning. It's about 25 degrees, 20 mile an hour wind. And I feel like temperature of like 12, so bundled and layered up this morning. 
overall had a good hunt last night. Saw four different bucks, that really nice three-year-old that he's gonna be a giant in a couple of years, I mean, next year especially even. So with the weather being the way it is, I chose to come up here and hunt deuce again. It's just in this timber, the deer can get out of the wind. I'm not quite as much out of the wind as I'd like to be, but the deer down on ground level, I'm sure out of the wind. I did check some cameras yesterday and the other shooter eight point, just a big old brute of a buck, uh, was on camera to my west about a quarter of a mile, but he's also been on the field down here. So he's moving around quite a bit. I'm just really surprised I haven't seen either of either Deuce or that buck yet, but I'm excited for this morning's hunt just because I think the deer have got to be up in this timber this morning. Hopefully they're moving once the sun comes up and uh, hopefully we can have a good hunt. Well guys, overall that was a pretty good sit. Ended up with six bucks and around 10 does. Uh, that eight point was the biggest deer I saw. And then to have those other two bucks all over the cameras surrounding this area and to not see them. Hopefully if I stay consistent and keep sitting enough that eventually uh, their luck will run out and one of them will give me a chance. While Nolan decides his next move on Deuce, back in southern Iowa, Owen Riegler wastes no time getting back in the woods. Here we are, November 11th, or after that wide nine. I actually seen that buck this morning up in, it was north of here up in the cut corn. He was hounding a doe, and so I don't know if he's with that doe or not, but gotta be out here giving ourselves a chance. It is uh, cooled down pretty much cold. It's like 28 degrees right now, so it's pretty chilly. I'm bundled up like the Michelin man. I don't know if I can draw my bow, who knows? I got plenty of clothes on. I'll practice draw here in a minute. I oh, we got about a three hour set. I'm hoping we'll have some does down here for this time of year. I wanna be around some does and a little pinch point, which we have right here. There's a couple of outside bends in this creek behind us and it pushes most everything on this side of the creek. And then I've got this little Oh, it's like a farm access road right here that I maintain, so they use that pretty steadily. We'll see what happens, boys. Give her a go. Guys, moving to our left, kind of toward the same place. Just see us back on the left side of that. Yeah. Yeah, we're in the game today. Jeez. He's going wherever this dog goes, I suppose. Well, some anxious moments here. We got the wide nine down there with the dough. We were seeing this little fawn out here. 
And I kept telling Devin, I was like, yeah, our mom's in there with a buck. Sure enough, old white guy is in there with a doe, so we just need him to feed out into this corn. We'll be in business. Well, we're in the game. Yes. Come on, send him. I can do about that. Try to call at him, but just with him being out of Dell, it's useless. shaking like a leaf here, but when he ran out of the field, he looked like he was struggling there at the end, and I could see a bunch of blood right behind his shoulder, so I think I hit him pretty good. That's one of the bigger bucks I've taken a shot at in quite a while, so pretty fired up. I want to go over there and check blood. I'm, I'm pretty sure he's down. It's been 
15, 20 minutes here. I'm gonna go over and see if we can take up the blood trail, see if we can find him. I, I think he's probably laying right in this little creek bottom here. So let's go find out. Apparently we were right behind the shoulder because he snapped it off there. So like I said, I seen him bleeding pretty bad. Right through here. I think that's his head sticking up right there. You see it? He didn't make it anywhere. Come on. Barely made it out of the field. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my word. Yeah, that's why I busted that arrow off. Look at where that hit him. Oh, my gosh. Look at the width of this thing. Look at that deer. Oh my word. The two bucks I wanted to go after this year was that Wolverine buck and this wide nine. I thought, man, that would be the best season in a long time. And lo and behold, we got them both. Look at that, that's crazy. Well guys, here we are next day. I tell you, it's turning into a dream season in a hurry. I've been bow hunting, what, 37, 38 years now, and this is probably the largest frame deer I've ever even seen, really. Just a huge frame. I don't know what else you could want for in a deer, you know. Little kicker point down here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but neat wraparound point, a little kicker off the base there, but just a buck dreams are made of, and I really didn't even think we'd see this buck last night, but there again, you just got to put your time in, give yourself a chance, you know really rewarding when they get to that age and you get them you know when you you think they're probably their best rack ever I, you can see what he's done right here this was would have been his four and a half year old set and this i think was his five and a half and that's how he got his name the wide nine he was a nine those years and uh he's a good bit bigger this year i would say most of the time six and a half or seven and a half is their best rack so he, is a, he had me probably more worked up than any buck I can remember in a long time. I was, I was pretty nervous trying to get a shot at him there. I was talking to Devin back and forth, and I was like, man, I don't want to mess this shot up. You know, I let down two or three times, and that's another good takeaway, too, is, you know, all the practice with the bow, and, you know, it's rewarding, satisfying to see that pay off. You know, we did a lot of shooting the last couple of months, and, you know, pretty much 10 ringed him, so pretty stoked about that and he didn't you know he didn't make it what 70 yards probably so yeah I don't know where we go from here you know just get ready for gun season Devin still got a tag so you know hopefully we can get him a buck and I'd really like to see uh, dad's buck and take him with dad's gun that'd be the you know I don't know if it'd get much better pretty rewarding to be having a, a killer season and we'll be back out again we'll get ready for gun season and we'll be back with you guys shortly So far we have had an awesome hunt. This is honestly probably my best rut hunt ever. I'm guessing that Hog Jr. is probably doing the same thing that Guards is doing with this doe up here. I gotta think that he's probably found a doe on the south part of the farm. The all day movement is on, the rut is on. You guys need to get in a tree, so. With the weather being the way it is, I chose to come up here and hunt deuce again. I'm just really surprised I haven't seen either deuce or that buck yet, but Hopefully they're moving once the sun comes up and uh, hopefully we can have a good hunt. I tell you, it's turning into a dream season in a hurry. I've been bow hunting, what, 37, 38 years now, and this is probably the largest frame deer I've ever even seen, really. I really didn't even think we'd see this buck last night, but there again, you just gotta put your time in, give yourself a chance, you know. Just a buck dreams are made of. Put your time in and give yourself a chance. A great cardinal rule to live by during this time of the season, nobody reflects this more than Owen Riegler. In what seemed like the blink of an eye, 
Owen's season turned into one of his best ever, tagging two great bucks with his bow in less than a week. As bow hunters, we dream of these days all year long, and finally, we're living them. Now is the time to log the hours, punching a time clock that brings a smile to our face. At any moment, the woods can roar to life with the echo of the chase beneath every head-turning step. This is the dream as we forge on, chasing November 